Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all really well and you're having a good day. Today's video is going to be all about pattern hacking. So pattern hacking is something that I love to do. I love to go through my pattern stash and see where I can change patterns to better suit my needs. I love to sometimes combine patterns to make different outfits and garments. And recently over on Instagram, I've had a couple of messages asking me about hacks that I've done, um, asking me about how to get started with pattern hacking. So I thought this would be an interesting video to make. So within the video, I'm just going to be sharing a few of the kind of tips and tricks and things that I've picked up along the way where I've tried pattern hacks in the past. I'm going to be sharing about how I approach pattern hacking and just a few things to note if you are a beginner and it's something that you would like to become a bit more familiar with. So if you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing, sometimes knitting and sometimes other crafts, but mainly lots of sewing content. I would love you to consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you do enjoy this video, please do give it a big like. And I always love to hear your comments below the video as well. So on to what I've learned in my own pattern hacking journey. So before I get started sharing my tips, I just want to say that I am no expert. Nothing that I'm gonna be talking about is based on sort of technical knowledge or anything like that. It's purely things that I've learned along the way, um, the way that I approach things and the way that I've done things in the past. So they may not be technically perfect, um, but it's just the way that I go about things. So tip number one would be to take inspiration from the high street, from Pinterest, from anything you see around online, the next catalogue, <laughs> um, anything you kind of see and like, and think about what you already have in your pattern stash that you can use to recreate um, a similar item. So last summer, I fell in love with a dress on the Cezanne website. And if I can, I'll pop in an image of that dress. Um, so I went to my pattern stash and thought about how I could try to make a dress inspired by the one I'd seen on the Cezanne website. And I made this dress, which was um, half of the Megan Nielsen Sudley dress pattern and half of the Fiber Mood mirror dress. As always, I'll pop in some pictures so that you can see the dresses and the garments on um, better than me just holding them here. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really good idea to just see what you have in your pattern stash already that you can use to recreate things that you've seen on the high street by using uh, different combinations of patterns. Um, so this one, as I say, it was a Sudley dress top and I've just used the kind of key hold neck top like this and it ties up at the neckline there and then I've attached instead of the normal um, Sudley dress skirt I've just taken the skirt pattern from the Fiber Mood mirror dress and I've attached it to the Megan Nielsen Sudley bodice and it just gives a really kind of different look. Nothing about what I'm sharing today is going to be rocket science um, you know it's just thinking about the kind of different combinations that you can make. I really like this kind of tiered look in a dress I think it's really kind of boho and it's really summery and we all know how um, tiered dresses and floaty kind of, um, I think they're called buffet dresses now aren't they? On the sewing bee recently they were called buffet dresses. I've never heard that expression before in the past <laughs> um, but apparently they are called buffet dresses. So this is my um, kind of buffet dress um, using those two different patterns. I also used another two of my favourite patterns recently to make this hack and this um, I've shared quite a lot in various different videos and you'll have probably seen me wearing it before if you are a regular viewer. Um, but this is the body of the Sagebrush top by um, Friday Pattern Company and I've taken the sleeves from the Fiber Mood Norma blouse and just attached those as um, different sleeves to the ones on the actual Sagebrush top pattern. And that again just gives a little bit more of a different look. I've also shortened the bodice a bit so it's just more of a kind of baby doll cropped style blouse. Um, and yeah, I took inspiration really from pictures on Pinterest. I tend to have a Pinterest board of clothes that I find and really like and want to recreate. Um, and I keep that in a board on my Pinterest account so that I can refer to it when I'm thinking about making new things for spring and summer or as the seasons change. Um, and then I think about different ways that I can go about recreating them. And rather than always buy a new pattern, it's always interesting and quite fun, I think, to think about what you've already got and how you can combine what you've already got to make something that you really like. That was a simple hack, just changing the sleeves and you have a whole different looking top there. 
Something else that you can think about doing um, is adding elastic to garments if you're not happy with how a garment is fitting. Um, I know last year and also this year, I think it's continuing, um, there's a big trend for kind of loose floaty smock style dresses, the indigo dress, um, the wilder gown, and the myositis dress, just to name a few examples. And they're all quite big and floaty. And I know that not everyone likes that look. I've made the indigo and the myositis dress and um, I loved the look of the wilder gown when everyone was making it this time last year. But I really wasn't happy with how kind of big and floaty and billowy it was on me. So I decided to use one of the hacks given in the pattern instructions and just add elastic to the waist of my wilder gown. And you may have seen this dress already, I have shared it before in a makes video. Um, but I simply added elastic around the waist part of the dress and it brought it in just underneath my waist and gave the dress a whole different look. But yeah, if you are loving the whole baby doll smock style style of dress, but you're just not sure if it suits you, don't let that put you off of making it. You can make it and you can add elastic like I've done here, or you can add waist ties to bring it in. You could make a little kind of skinny belt just to bring it in a little bit as well. And this is such a simple hack, but it's just something that may turn a dress that you're really unhappy with, that you feel really frumpy in, that you just don't want to be seen out in, into something that you'll feel really kind of happy and stylish with and much more shapely in. So that's tip number two, add waist ties or elastic if you're not happy with how a garment is fitting you. Tip number three is to try adapting a dress pattern into a top or a top pattern into a dress. So you can see what I'm wearing here today is a kind of cropped peplum blouse style um, top. And this was a hack that I made sometime last year, I think, based on the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges dress. And this was made, um, again, taking inspiration from the high street. This time last year, these kind of button down peplum style blouses were in everywhere and I really liked them and um, I really wanted to make my own. So I thought again about what patterns I had that I might be able to use to recreate such a blouse. And my beloved Darling Ranges dress pattern came to the rescue again. So here is the Darling Ranges dress pattern if you haven't seen it already. I've shown this pattern so many times on here and you can probably see how battered it is because I've used it so much. I actually have a whole other video sharing my entire collection of Darling Ranges dresses. So I'll link that video up above if you want to go and watch that after this video. Um, but yeah, I've used this pattern to basically create a little peplum style blouse and I've simply used the bodice part of the dress and um, a very short part of the skirt. So I've used the skirt pattern and just cut it very short um, and um, I've added short sleeves rather than the big kind of elasticated sleeves. I didn't have to go and buy another pattern to make my blouse. Um, I just used what I already had and just kind of thinking about how to switch up the pattern pieces a bit enabled me to make something that I really wanted to recreate. So that's one example of just thinking about how you can adapt dress patterns and make them into tops. You could also do that very easily with say the myosotis dress. So you could just cut off the dressed um, part of the pattern just at your hips and you'd have a little peplum skirt for that as well and that would be really pretty. Obviously there are loads of other dress patterns that you could use for hacking into tops. I've actually done the same thing again with my Sudley dress pattern and um, I've used the bodice part of that pattern and added a peplum again um, just to make a different kind of style of top there with the Sudley pattern. They're not necessarily things that are shown on the pattern diagram, they're just things that I've kind of been able to make up by combining different parts of the pattern um, and thinking about different ways that I can use the pattern pieces. If you're thinking about switching and making a top into a dress um, there are various hacks that you could do that way around so I know lots of people have made the Agnes top by tilling in the buttons um, cut it shorter up to waist length and then just added a gathered skirt and to make a gathered skirt it's very easy you just need two rectangles obviously um, based on approximately two times or 2.5 times the width of your top um, so that's a very easy hack to try as well. And obviously there are lots of top versions you could try that hack with as well. There's lots of jersey top patterns you could try that with. If you didn't want a gathered skirt for your top, you could just simply extend the lines of your top down um, over your hips and make a straight style dress as well. So my next tip is just to think about how you can make a pattern work better for you. So for example, I had this myositis dress pattern by Deer and Doe in my pattern stash for ages before I got around to making it. And um, I couldn't put my finger on quite why I didn't like this pattern and didn't want to make it. 
And then one day it dawned on me that um, although I liked the kind of tiered look of this skirt and frill, I just didn't like how um, the skirt and frill was sat. I don't know why, I'm just a bit strange about things like that sometimes. Um, so one day it kind of dawned on me that actually I didn't have to make the skirt in that way. I could change it up a little bit and I could have my skirt as a kind of more tiered skirt, much like my um, Sudley and Mirror dress skirt. So all I needed to do was just adapt my pattern pieces slightly to make two longer skirt panels that were still tiered and still gathered. Um, and I went about making my dress and then I absolutely loved it. So here's the example of my finished first Myosotis dress. So all I've done with this dress is simply uh, change the measurements in the skirt panels just so that I have more equally sized skirt tier pieces. Yeah, when this was done, um, I was much more happy with that um, style of dress. And, um, I since made another one um, with exactly the same kind of style of skirt and this one I made with a longer sleeve. So that's something else that you can think about as well, just think about whether or not you want to extend or shorten the length of your sleeves. That gives the dress a whole different look as well. So yeah, if you feel like something's not working right for you in a pattern, if there's something that you just don't like about it, don't discount the pattern, don't disregard it. Think about what you could change and adapt maybe to make it more suitable for you, to make it more suit your taste. Hopefully that will help you to get more use out of the patterns you have. Likewise, of course, if you feel like a skirt is too short or too long, you can really easily lengthen or shorten something just to make it feel that much better. I know in the past when I've had a pattern, I felt like I just needed to make it exactly as that pattern was. I couldn't change anything. Um, but as I'm getting more confident and more sort of familiar with how patterns work, I'm starting to realise that I can actually adapt things to suit my personal taste more and to suit my style more and to suit my own body shape more. So just a couple of really simple things that you can do to make your patterns uh, work for you and get more use out of them. Another thing you can think about when approaching patterns is to think about changing your sleeves. So you can either remove sleeves like I've done with this Darling Rangers dress here and have a completely sleeveless version of your dress or as I said before you can lengthen or shorten sleeves to give your dress a whole new look. So in this example here this is a Darling Rangers dress that I made back last summer I think from a really lovely embroidered denim chambray fabric from Higgs and Higgs and I absolutely love this version. Um, but yeah with this fabric I just decided that I didn't want to wear that fabric as sleeves so I decided to try making a sleeveless version of this dress and I've actually made two sleeveless versions now of this dress and I really love them. So points to note if you're thinking about removing a sleeve you often have to take in part of the um, width of the shoulder seam because when you're inserting a sleeve you'll have that little bit extra length so that your sleeve kind of drapes over your shoulder. So with this version on the pattern piece I simply took in the shoulder seam length by a centimetre, graded it down to the armhole and that just brings it up quite nicely on your shoulder so that it sits a bit better um, and it just looks prettier and it doesn't hang too far over your shoulder. Um, so that's all I did just to adapt the pattern to make this into a sleeveless version of the dress. I'll just show this pattern again for the millionth time but um, you can see on the line drawings there that there isn't a sleeveless version of the dress given but it's a really simple easy change to make if you do want to make a sleeveless version of any dress really. You just need to make sure that you change your armhole shaping just so that it comes in a little bit on your shoulder. Something I've never actually tried is adding sleeves to a sleeveless item of clothing or a sleeveless pattern. Um, and I'm guessing it might be a little bit more complicated that way around, but maybe something to try in the future, we'll see. Something else you can think about when you're trying to adapt your patterns or just make them that little bit extra special is adding frills or pockets to something. So in my example here, I have um, a really simple sew over it shift top. So this is the sew over it shift dress and top pattern. Um, and you can see probably again that this one has been very well used. It was one of the first patterns I actually used in my dressmaking journey. And it was a really, really easy pattern to start with. Um, so if I just turn the pattern around, you can see the line drawings again. So this is the top version of the pattern that I've used. And then you can see that on the version of the sleeveless dress there, there's a little frill at the shoulders. So all I've done here in making this top is to make up the shift top exactly as the long sleeve pattern details. But then when I came to inserting my sleeves, I used the frill part of the pattern that's normally used on the sleeveless version of the dress. And I inserted that 
within my sleeve just to give this really cute kind of flutter sleeve on top of my long sleeve part of the blouse and I really like how that turned out. It's a really simple hack to do. Again, you don't need a whole new pattern to do this kind of thing. You can just think about what you already got in your stash. I think even if you didn't have a frill pattern piece, it would be quite easy just to make up a little pattern for your own frill that you could just insert. And just adding something really simple like that just takes the top up a whole other level really and make it more dressy. If you had it in a different fabric to this, you could make your frills bigger so that they stood out more. Or likewise, you could make them smaller. You could add a frill to a neckline perhaps, or even actually add a frill to the bottom of your top if you wanted to. Or you could even add a frill say to the front of this top um, just to give it a little bit extra detail and make it that little bit more special. So I think for me, having a really kind of basic top and dress pattern like the sew over it shift dress pattern is a really good thing to have in your pattern um, stash because you can then kind of build on that pattern. You can add things to it. You can change it around. You can crop it shorter. You can make it longer. Um, and as I say, you can add things to it to make it just that little bit different. Another hack you could try if you're feeling confident is to add a button band to something. So this is a hack I did quite a while ago actually um, and I've added a button band to this poppy play suit by Sew Over It. So this is a hack that I actually got from one of Lisa Comfort's um, Sew and Tell videos from quite a while ago now. I think she was actually hacking a poppy play suit to make it more wearable for breastfeeding actually but I really liked the look of this hack so I decided to give it a go myself. Um, and basically it is a lot easier than it looks. So you have your front piece, which would normally be cut on the fold. You um, simply kind of slash it down the middle to give it two, two separate parts. And then you add on a button band on each side that you would then kind of turn under um, and add button holes and buttons to. So this button placket is actually a fake one. It doesn't actually undo. Um, I've simply sewn my buttons on. And the reason for that is that when I was going through this hack and trying to work it all out, I still made my keyhole um, neckline in the back. Um, and you'd normally have this kind of keyhole opening so that you can get the play suit on and off. Um, obviously, if your buttons did open, you wouldn't need this keyhole area because your buttons would open and you put it on that way. So just proof that a lot of pattern hacking is just trial and error and you learn things along the way. So if I ever do this hack again, I will keep this um, as one piece and then I'll have my button placket actually opening so that that will be the way that I'll get the play suit on and off. Obviously, I haven't given a very technical um, explanation of how to make the button band. If anyone is actually interested in that, maybe I could do that as a sew along or something in another video. Um, I would really like to make another version of this hack actually. And I do love this sew over it poppy face suit. I love that pattern. And again, it's really hackable. And I'm just thinking that I have actually made another hacked version of the poppy play suit. I've made a clot length one, which I really love as well. But yeah, just another simple change that you can use just to make a pattern look completely different. So I hope this video has been helpful. As I say, nothing really is rocket science. It's just all about changing your thinking, I think, to see how different patterns can work in different ways and how different patterns can be adapted and changed to more suit your personal style and taste um, and trends that are coming up and things that you might want to try and recreate and things like that. Um, I find all of this really fun and I love hacking patterns, as you probably know already. And I do have an idea for another pattern hack that I really want to try involving the Avid seamstress, the blouse pattern and a collar. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say for now, just in case it doesn't work out, but stay tuned and hopefully I'll be able to share that one with you soon. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and do comment below and let me know what your favourite pattern hacks are. Any tips and tricks that you might have to add to the ones I've shared today will be really helpful too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll hopefully be back next week with another video and I'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye!